The Paramount Ballroom is probably the most famous ballroom from Shanghai in the 1930s. And there are several reasons for that. One is that it was the most extravagantly designed ballroom. So a lot of its fame comes from its design. Um, it catered to a very high-class clientele, at least at first. Um, so it became very famous for the people, for its customers, and for its performers. And also, it was, uh, f it, it's one of the few ballrooms that's actually lasted that's been preserved from the 30s up until the present day. So you can still go there to s today and see the Paramount Ballroom. So that also contributes to its solidity in the cultural memory. The Paramount Ballroom was built between 1931 and 1933, and it was financed by a group of Chinese bankers, a uh, very powerful uh, um, Chinese elite. And they built it because at that time, Ballroom dancing had already become quite popular among Chinese elites living in Shanghai. And it was becoming, it was beginning to be popular among the masses of Chinese urbanites. You had more ballrooms uh, cropping up in the city and the prices were going down. They were serving a lower class clientele. So the Paramount was built by these elites to maintain their eliteness in the city. And it um, opened in 1933 and in fact the wife of the Chinese mayor of the Chinese city, the Shanghai was divided into um, three different, into two foreign settlements and the surrounding Chinese municipality. And the mayor, the wife of the mayor of the Chinese municipality actually cut the ribbon in the opening ceremony for the ballroom. Okay, the designer of the Paramount Ballroom was an architect, a Chinese architect, and he had attended Nanyang University, which was the former name of Jiao Tong University. It's and he was trained in Western um, engineering and architecture and worked for an architectural firm in the city. And he built the Paramount along Western design principles, according to the most up-to-date modern standards of ballroom design in, say, American or European cities. Um, it was ultra-modern in design. The architect actually designed the ballroom on the design principle of public intimacy. So his um, strategy, his design strategy, was actually quite different from earlier ballrooms in Shanghai that had preceded the Paramount. And he lays this out explicitly in an architectural journal from that period, where he writes that older ballrooms, ballrooms dating back to the 1920s, tended to be very large spaces, very cavernous halls, cavernous open halls. So they were good for holding large celebrations like the, um, the annual national balls, the grand balls that were held by the foreign communities, where you, in, you might invite 1,000 people or 1,500 people. But a ballroom, in order to survive in Shanghai, needed to operate on a regular basis, on a nightly basis. So Saturday nights were okay. You'd had more of a, a client a crowd. But on the weeknights, when relatively few people went to, went to the ballroom, uh, you'd feel a very kind of, you, if you went to a cavernous ballroom, you'd feel a very kind of cold and distant feeling. So um, for that reason, he argued, these ballrooms did not survive. In fact, for example, the, uh, the example he uses is the majestic ballroom, which was built in the 1920s and was the finest ballroom in Asia. But it was one of these cavernous marble ballrooms with a fountain, pergolas, um, an Italian garden. And it didn't last through the Depression. It closed down in 1931. So his design strategy was to design a ballroom that could hold up to a thousand people for these national balls and special celebrations, but that could provide a set of varied intimate spaces for people to retreat into. So even on a, on a weeknight when there weren't as many people, say, you know, a few dozen or a hundred people, people would still feel that sense of intimacy, of closeness. Um, so you can see that in the design structure of the ballroom.